Hello students welcome to Cosmos Convention. In this video we are going to study about Robinson Crusoe economy model with two persons and two commodities. But just before please like and subscribe my channel. Let's start from the introduction of the model. A Robinson Crusoe economy is a simple framework used to study some essential issues in economics. The basic model assumes an economy with one consumer, one producer and two goods. The title, Robinson Crusoe, is taken from to the 1719 novel of the same name written by Daniel Defoe. The framework of the model is based on its assumptions. Robinson Crusoe is assumed to be shipwrecked on a deserted island. The basic assumptions of the basic model are as follows. The island is not connected with the rest of the world, and hence cannot trade. There is only a one economic agent, Crusoe himself. All goods on the island have to be produced or create from existing endowments there is only single individual, Robinson himself. He acts as producer, to maximize profits, and as well as consumer, to maximize his utility. Robinson Crusoe economy with two persons. With single economic agent we cannot explain the role of trade. So, for that person let we consider a second person to understand the possibility of trade to the economy. And that person is Crusoe's friend, Man Friday. In the Robinson Crusoe model, he is considered as another agent with equal decision making abilities as Crusoe have. After adding the second person, conditions of Pareto efficiency can be examined by using the concept of the Edgeworth box. Robinson Crusoe economy with two persons. Crusoe has two activities to participate in either to earn income or pass his time in leisure. Just like the choices that households, suppliers of labor, face. In this case, the income generating activity is gathering coconuts. As usual, the more time he spends in leisure, the less coconuts he has to eat, on the contrary, the more time he spends to collect coconuts, the less time he has for leisure. Production Possibility Frontier, PPF, is a line that shows all the various combinations of output of two goods that can be produced using available resources and technology. So, now let we consider another commodity that Crusoe can produce other than coconuts, i.e., fish. Now, Robinson has to choose between the production of these two, i.e. how many coconuts to gather and how many fish to hunt. The combinations of fish and coconuts that he can produce from spending different amounts of time to each activity is known as the production possibilities set. Production possibilities set in the Robinson Crusoe economy with two commodities. Here we draw the PPF and a tangent line that shows marginal rate of transformation. The boundary of the production possibilities set is known as the production possibility frontier, PPF. This curve measures the feasible outputs that Crusoe can produce, with a fixed technological constraint and given amount of resources. In this case, the resources and technological constraints are Robinson Crusoe's labor. It's important to note here that the shape of the PPF depends on the nature of the technology. And here technology refers to the type of returns to scale prevalent. In the above figure, the fundamental assumption is the usual decreasing returns to scale. So, the PPF is concave to the origin. But if we assume the increasing returns to scale, Crusoe embarked upon a mass production movement and hence faced decreasing costs, the PPF would be convex to the origin. The PPF is only linear and downward slope in two cases, one, if the technology for gathering coconuts and hunting fish shows constant returns to scale two, if there is only one input in production so, in the Robinson Crusoe economy, the PPF will be linear due to the presence of only one input. Suppose that Crusoe can produce 4 pounds of fish or 8 pounds of coconuts per hour. If he devotes LF hours to fish gathering and LC hours to gathering coconuts, he will produce 4 LF pounds of fish and 8 LC pounds of coconuts. Suppose that he decides to work for 12 hours a day. Then the production possibilities set will consist of all combinations of fish and coconuts, such that F equals 4 LF if equation 1 and C equals 8 LC is equation 2 and their sum if LF plus LC equals 12 is equation 3 now put the equation 1 and 2 values in the equation 3, that will be F over 4 plus C over 8 equals 12. Marginal rate of transformation 
This equation f over 4 plus c over 8 equals 12 represents Crusoe's PPF. The slope of this PPF measures the marginal rate of transformation, that is, how much of the first good must be given up in order to increase the production of the second good by one unit. If Crusoe works one hour less on hunting fish, he will have four less fish. If he devotes this extra hour to collecting coconuts, he will have eight extra coconuts. The MRT is thus equals delta C over delta F equals minus eight quarters which is equal to minus two. Comparative advantage. Under this section, the possibility of trade is introduced by adding another person to the economy. Suppose that the new worker who is added to the Robinson Crusoe economy has different skills in gathering coconuts and hunting fish. The second person is called Friday. Comparative advantage. Friday can produce 8 pounds of fish or 4 pounds of coconuts per hour. If he too decides to work for 12 hours, his production possibilities set will be determined by the following relations. F equals 8 LF, equation 1. C equals 4 LC, equation 2. LF plus LC equals 12, equation 3. Thus, MRT of coconuts, fish equals delta C over delta F equals minus 4 over 8 which is equal to minus 1 over 2. Comparative advantage. This means that for every pound of coconuts Friday gives up, he can produce two more pounds of fish. So, we can say that Friday has a comparative advantage in hunting fish while Crusoe has a comparative advantage in gathering coconuts. Their respective PPFs can be shown in the following diagram. Joint production possibilities in the Robinson Crusoe economy. The joint production possibilities set at the extreme right shows the total amount of both commodities that can be produced by Crusoe and Friday together. It combines the best of both workers. If both of them work to gather coconuts only, the economy will have 144 coconuts in all, 96 from Crusoe and 48 from Friday. This can be obtained by setting F equals 0 in their respective PPF equations and summing them up. Here the slope of the joint PPF is minus 1 half. If we want more fish, we should shift that person who has a comparative advantage in fish hunting, i.e. Friday, out of coconut gathering and into fish hunting. When Friday is producing 96 pounds of fish, he is fully occupied. If fish production is to be increased beyond this point, Crusoe will have to start hunting fish. Here onward, the slope of the joint PPF is minus 2. If we want to produce only fish, then the economy will have 144 pounds of fish, 48 from Crusoe and 96 from Friday. Thus, the joint PPF is kinked because Crusoe and Friday have comparative advantages in different commodities. As the economy gets more and more ways of producing output and different comparative advantages, the PPF becomes concave. Pareto efficiency. Assume that their endowment bundle is C, F. The Pareto efficient bundle can be determined at the mutual tangency of Crusoe's and Friday's indifference curves in the Edgeworth box along the Pareto set. These are the bundles at which Crusoe's and Friday's marginal rate of substitution are equal. In a simple exchange economy, the contract curve describes the set of bundles that exhaust the gains from trade. But in a Robinson Crusoe, Friday economy, there is another way to exchange goods, to produce less of one good and more of the other. Pareto efficiency. Production possibilities set in Robinson Crusoe economy and the Edgeworth box showing a Pareto efficient situation within. Pareto efficiency. In the above figure, it is clear that an economy operating at a position where the misses of either Crusoe or Friday is not equal to the MRT between coconuts and fish cannot be Pareto efficient. This is because the rate at which, say Friday is willing to trade coconuts for fish is different from the rate at which coconuts can be transformed into fish. Thus, there is a way to make Friday better off by rearranging the production pattern. Thus, for Pareto efficiency, MRT of coconuts, fish equals misses of coconuts, fish. For both Robinson Crusoe and Friday, this can be achieved in a competitive market by decentralizing production and consumption decisions, that is Crusoe and Friday will both solve their own problems of how much to consume and produce independently. Thanks for watching the video, if you like the video,
please like and subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for upcoming videos.